Hello there and welcome to my channel. As this is my first official video for my YouTube channel, I thought it only fitting to share a little bit about myself, my health and fitness journey, and what brought me from the standard Australian diet through to keto and through to carnivore and what was my why. My name is Alicia. As you can tell from my accent, I am from Australia. I'm 42 years old. I'm a cosplayer who loves to lift. I'm a carnivore and I'm also a diploma in health and wellbeing student in the view to become a primal health coach. So I guess I would begin uh, in my late teens uh, when my health started to decline. Coincidentally, that's the time I also discovered junk food and alcohol and alcohol and alcohol addiction would become a prevalent part of my life until I got rid of it seven years ago. Uh, my weight and my health really began to fall into a bit of disrepair as I left high school and by the time I was in my early 20s, I was extremely overweight and by my mid 20s, I was morbidly obese. At that stage, I was pushing 90 kilos in weight. I'm a five foot two woman. That's a hell of a lot of pressure on the body. Uh, it's very, very taxing, very, very wearing. And as a result of carrying so much weight, I felt incredibly ill. I had to quit my job. I was on medication that they give to reflux patients with huge peptic ulcers in order just to be able to tolerate water sometimes. So I felt very miserable and my mental health was completely in the bin along with the rest of my life. So something really had to change. So eventually I did get a handle on my health and I started to exercise a little bit, change my eating habits somewhat, and I did shed the weight. I did get down around 30 kilos, which was amazing. However, I continued to drink during this stage and this is really where my alcohol addiction took off. Um, by the time I was in my 30s, I was completely addicted to alcohol. I had little to no control over it. If I wasn't drunk, I was thinking about getting drunk. I was the person that was at the bottle shop as soon as it opened, buying enough alcohol to get me through the day. If I ran out of alcohol, I was back at the bottle shop completely off my face and drunk, buying more. Um, it really, really took a toll on me mentally and physically. And as a result of continuing to drink, uh, my weight started to increase again and I felt incredibly miserable. I would be the person that would turn up to work drunk and try and hide it. I would go to family functions with a few drinks under my belt. Um, I felt like I couldn't function socially without alcohol. And um, when I ended up getting sober eventually, it was really, really hard for me to go out and connect with people for a very long time because the alcohol wasn't there and that was my lubricant and that was my self-esteem. So that was um, a really challenging time. Uh, my alcohol addiction really came to quite a pivotal head on Christmas Eve of 2014, um, where I completely embarrassed myself by getting blind drunk, blacked out. I woke up the next day with one of the worst hangovers I've ever had in my life. I couldn't participate in any of the festivities couldn't connect with family and friends. I was so mortified at myself. And that's when I knew I had to take a stand or I wasn't going to survive much longer. I just, I physically and mentally could not continue to live my life that way because it wasn't living. It was barely surviving. So that was it for me. No more alcohol has passed my lips since Christmas Eve, 2014. So about six months into sobriety, uh, I had started to gain weight again. Um, I was feeling like I didn't really have any goals to strive for. I was feeling pretty listless. I, I had no hobbies. You know, my hobby before had been drinking and, and took up a huge amount of my time. And I'd always loved the idea of being a fit, healthy person. You, you know, just I found muscularity fascinating. I loved the idea of weightlifting. I was a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan and I just found that bodybuilding seemed to be this amazing transformative thing that I was actually really keen to get involved in. And I happened to walk into my local supplement store about six months into sobriety 
and I looked around and I saw a poster for a body transformation competition for a very well-known Australian bodybuilding supplement brand. And I looked at it and it had this beautiful, fit, muscular woman on it, just smiling, looking so happy. And in an instant, I said to myself, that's what I want. I'm going to do that. And so I did. I signed up for that body transformation competition and that's where my lifting journey really started. Lifting weights completely transformed my life and my physique and I'm so forever grateful for finding it and it's just been a part of my life ever since. I, I, I cannot escape it. It's a daily thing. It was 12 weeks of really hard slog. Um, I'd never had nutrition dialed down like that. Um, I'd never had a training regime like that in my life so suffice it to say it was hard work uh, but I came out of that seven kilos lighter uh, with some lean muscle mass reduced body fat and a complete new zest for life and I knew from that experience that bodybuilding was for me and I would pursue it until I could no longer lift weights bodybuilding has completely changed my life and it's gotten me some of the greatest friends and connections that I've ever had in my life. And I'll be forever grateful for um, just taking the chance on my own health and fitness and going down that road because it's going to be with me forever. And it's a huge, important part of my life and part of my self-care routine. People started to see me as a healthy, happy person, whereas before I was just, you know, the drunk party girl, you know, and that was pretty amazing to me to go from being morbidly obese to a recovering alcoholic to someone that other people look to for health and fitness advice. And I found that incredibly humbling and I still do to this day. And even more amazingly for me, years down the track, I ended up being a mentor and ambassador uh, for that particular bodybuilding supplement brand where I got the chance to lead, inspire and coach other people along their health and fitness journeys. And that truly meant so much to me and really sparked uh, part of the reason uh, why I want to get my diploma in health and well-being so that I may professionally coach other people. So I'd started to lift, I'd gotten sober, things were going well. However, I had another problem brewing in the background. And TMI, we're going to talk about some menstruation stuff. So if this isn't your bag, guys or girls, please skip ahead in the video. In 2015, I noticed my periods were getting increasingly more painful, increasingly more heavy. I had massive clotting, massive extended bleeds, absolutely excruciating pain to the point where it was difficult for me to walk at times. There was something really going on for me downstairs and for a while I just put up with it thinking you know what I'm just one of the unlucky women in the world that have incredibly bad period pain but it just progressively got worse and worse to the point where I just couldn't ignore it and I really needed to medically explore what was going on it just didn't feel normal or right I was really tired all the time as well Lo and behold, I had uh, iron deficiency anemia from losing so much blood due to bleeding so much, and I eventually got diagnosed with adenomyosis. Now, you're probably like, what is adenomyosis? Adenomyosis is basically the ugly little sister of endo. Uh, endo is where your endometrial tissue breaks out and grows outside the uterus, whereas with adeno, it breaks into the wall. So what it's left me with is an incredibly enlarged, painful uterus, uh, causing all those symptoms I mentioned previously, along with bizarre things like um, shooting electricity pains down through my uterus. Um, yeah, there's a whole host of really nasty stuff that can come along with adeno. I eventually sought specialist help um, and was told basically the only cure for endometriosis is a full hysterectomy which at the age of 41 uh, at the time when I was considering that, that was a lot to think about. Uh, I've never wanted children of my own, so that wasn't an issue for me, but it's a big decision 
for anyone to decide to go through an operation like that. So I really had to think about it. And I've always known that there's something incredibly powerful about nutrition. And so before I wanted to go down that road, I really wanted to explore my options. Um, I was also getting pretty desperate because I was on a lot of opioids and I'd been on them for years because that's what I needed for the pain. But I was also on CBD oil and in this country, it is unbelievably expensive to maintain that as your medicinal treatment. I was paying close to $500 for a couple of months worth of medication. I'm probably one of the lucky people. There are people out there that probably have to spend far more. So it just wasn't a feasible option for me anymore. So what I wanted to do was look into what I could control before having to go down the surgical route. So I spent some time researching and found a lot of literature on ketogenic diets, adeno and endo. And let me tell you, previously, I used to make so much fun of ketogenic diets as a carb heavy bodybuilder. Um, that was all I knew. And that's, that's the way it was. And uh, my worldview at that stage, I wasn't really prepared to accept that that would um, be something relevant to me. But um, the more I looked into it, the more I started to open my mind and became far more accepting to the possibility that this could be something really positive for my life. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give keto a go. Started to reduce my carbs, reduce my sugars, look at eating the right types of foods that you want to on a ketogenic diet or protocol. And I did start seeing some results. Uh, I noticed there was a definite little change in my mood. Um, my pain lessened a little bit. Um, overall, I felt much lighter uh, my sleep started to get a little bit better so there were some slight positive changes that i was definitely seeing um, through the reduction of some harmful stuff in my diet one thing i'm really grateful for going through the keto route first is that it really identified for me how incredibly carb addicted i was and i was incredibly sugar addicted even though I would swear black and blue that I didn't have a problem with sweet things, but keto really shone a light on that for me. And the moment I realized that keto was a bit of a problem for me and I needed something a bit more prescriptive for my needs is that I was sitting in a bus stop with a very large block of my favorite keto chocolate. And um, I thought I was hungry at that moment, but um, really I was just carb chasing and I wanted something that was like sugar. My brain, even though it was getting artificial sweeteners in, my brain still anticipated it as sugar and took it as sugar and those cravings just went through the roof. So I sat at this bus stop with this block of chocolate and I had one row and then another and then another. And I realized that I was shoving that chocolate into my mouth the way that I used to drink alcohol. It was addict behavior. Trust me, an addict recognizes addict behavior and that was it. And that's when I realized that I needed to go deeper and I needed to look into what was going to be good for my long-term health. I was still having huge spikes in my adenomyosis pain. So I definitely knew it was time to reassess and look at what I could tweak even further. So back online and back down all those rabbit holes that we, we go down when we're looking, looking for the fix, looking for the answer. And then I stumbled across carnivore and I was like, carnivore. Okay. That sounds a bit insane. All you do is eat meat. Okay. Well, I've come to keto. I've been prepared to open my mind and accept new information. Could this be something that's very positive for me too? I was reading all these incredible success stories for people like it was just almost magical seeing how their lives had been turned around with ancestral nutrition so i thought what the heck i've got nothing to lose you know i'm on all these tablets that i desperately want to be off i have this cbd that i can no longer afford i do not want to put my body unnecessarily through a huge medical procedure if i can avoid it I'm going to give carnivore a go for seven days. I said to myself, I was like, yeah, seven days. At the end of those seven days, I kid you not, I was off all my pain medication. And I thought, all right, maybe I'm just having a good month. This is a glitch in the matrix, you know? 
Carb addicted little me went, eh, that was fun, went back to keto. Why did I go back to keto? Because on the other hand, I was still completely carb and sugar addicted and I was looking for those hits. I was doing keto, but I was still eating salads as big as my head, getting in more carbohydrate than I probably should because my body was perpetually chasing that. I've figured out since that you either fall into the category of moderator or abstainer. I'm an abstainer through and through. It's how I gave up drinking alcohol. It's how I gave up smoking cigarettes. And it's how I gave up everything in my life but meat and animal products. So I said to myself, all right, kid, you're going to go back to carnivore for seven days. And if the same incredible thing happens again, this is the diet for you. This is the way you should be eating. This is what your body wants. Went on carnivore for another seven days. What do you think happened? Bang, off all my pain meds, and I was starting to feel better than I had in years. And let me tell you the benefits of the carnivore diet for me just keep on growing and growing and growing. I'm five months into my journey, and every single day, I'm still learning new things about my body. I'm so appreciative of the health that I'm in now, and the benefits are just absolutely overwhelming. And I really look forward to sharing more of those with you in upcoming videos. Not only am I off all my pain medication, I've been off my pain medication since July of this year. I am sleeping better than I have in years. My confidence is through the roof. My mental health is the best it has ever been. And I've never felt this calm, satiated and happy in my life. Oh, and another thing too, I have gotten some of the most amazing body recomposition I've ever experienced in my life trumps any kind of diet any kind of restriction crazy amount of cardio pill lotion potion that you could possibly take carnivore is just the fix for me my body has been through a lot of damage not only from the things i was doing before like the drinking and the smoking but it sustained a lot of metabolic damage from yo-yo dieting restricting binge restrict behaviors and unfortunately, that has definitely been wearing on my hormones. But carnivore is really turning that around for me. I had huge problems in the beginning and for a long time before that in feeling full and satiated. I could not trust my hunger cues at all. And that is starting to calm down. And it is the most beautiful feeling when your body trusts you again. It feels safe. It feels nourished and supported. I hope you enjoyed finding out a little bit more about my personal health and fitness journey. I would love to hear about your carnivore journey also. Please feel free to drop a comment below and I look forward to sharing future content with you.